Director, Kawai Tong Ha, GMSC Director, Professor Rich Berg, Director of Bachelor of Journalism Program, Jeffrey Timmermans. 大家好，歡迎大家嚟臨由香港大學新聞及傳媒研究中心 JMSC 舉辦嘅新聞系課程簡介會。我係梁安琪 Melissa， 就讀港大新聞系嘅 Year Four， 係今日嘅大會司儀。相信各位同學都想對新聞系嘅課程認識更多。希望透過今日嘅活動，可以令大家更了解我哋嘅課程。喺今日嘅講座裏面，首先會由 JMSC 嘅總監做一個簡單嘅介紹，然後會有一段新聞廣播示範，當中會包括畢業生嘅分享，然後就會講大家最關注嘅收生要求。最後，我們我哋會有答問環節，解答大家嘅疑問。Without further ado, we would like to invite our JMSC Director, Professor Keith Richburg, to introduce the program. Professor Richburg. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, wow, big crowd, hot crowd here. Uh, we did one of these in the morning. It wasn't nearly this large and lively, but I think that's because everybody was out for Halloween and couldn't get up for, <laughs> couldn't get up early in the mornings. So everybody came in the afternoon. Glad to see you got the face paint off from last night from your costumes. Uh, just want to say welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I know you're. It's been busy up here. You're looking around. You're shopping around at some of the various programs. So. Thanks for coming and listening to us. Uh, we've got a great team here. They're, they're also the best looking team at HKU here. <laughs> uh, wave everybody, you guys are all great. They're all putting a lot of hard work for this. Uh, you know, if you're considering, I, I'll tell you, I came here just as director a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of months ago. I started in September, but I actually was teaching here last year. I spent, uh, personally, I spent 34 years working with the Washington Post. Um, American newspaper based in Washington, D.C. You may have heard of it because they broke a big scandal years ago called Watergate, <laughs> the, the, the resignation of Richard Nixon. Uh, I, I was living in Hong Kong, Paris, uh, Jakarta, Manila, uh, and then uh, Washington, D.C., New York, and uh, Beijing and Shanghai, and decided to uh, come here because uh, I could, well, I can't think of a more exciting time to be in journalism and to be getting into journalism for you students, and I can't think of a more exciting time to be here in Asia to be in Hong Kong. So if you're considering uh, you know, journalism as a career, keep that in mind. I, I, think, I think it's an absolutely perfect time. Uh, if, you're, if you're thinking of our program here, uh, I'll just make a couple of points, and then you'll hear from the team here, and you're going to see some really cool stuff. But first of all, you all get to do a double major, a second major. And a lot of our grads, are, uh, they, they go into computer science, international relations, finance. I heard somebody was doing urban governance. So it's a real chance to kind of spread yourself in different programs. So we teach you journalism skills here, but you're also taking a major in something else as well. Um, we're international, um, as you can tell by my accent. I'm American. We've got an Australian accent coming along. We have uh, accents pretty much everywhere. So it's an international program from the faculty, but also international with the students. So you'll, you're, you'll have students from everywhere in your group as well. There's also a chance for international travel. Uh, we have exchange programs. You can go to Paris if you want to go to Sciences Po. You can go to Denmark. You can go to all kinds of places. And you get to work with some really cool tools, and which you'll see some. We're going to give a little demonstration later. I'm talking drones and virtual reality and all kinds of incredibly cool stuff uh, that you get to work with. And, and the most important thing, though, is you know, you know, our grads go into journalism, and that's terrific. But um, a lot also go into other fields because we teach you journalism skills, digital skills, storytelling skills, writing skills, visual, audiovisual skills. But these are applicable in a lot of range, a lot of different professions, a range of different uh, occupations. So you will meet in some of the presentations you have today. Uh, some of our students who work for the Hong Kong government, they work in banks, they work in public relations because the things you learn at JMSC are applicable in a lot of different places. So our grads get out and they get jobs and they do uh, amazing work. And the ones who go into journalism are working in some really top-notch places: CNN, uh, Bloomberg. Uh, the Financial Times, and so uh, it's a it's a terrific program to expand your skill set, expand your mind, and to really become part of this family because we have a pretty small program, only about 25 to 30 students, maybe a little bit more, a little less each each year. So it's a small family, and uh, it really you'd be really becoming a part of something here. So I uh, I'm going to turn it over to this uh, good-looking team here, and they're going to tell you the rest of the details. Professor 
而你嘅第二主修範疇亦非常之廣泛，包括社會學、商業、經濟同埋文學院入面嘅課程。我哋港大新聞系裏面國際生大概佔學生嘅人數一半，所以你有機會接觸到唔同國家嘅學生，從而有一個更加國際化嘅視野。另外，數碼化亦係一個我哋非常之重視嘅元素。我哋就啱啱增添咗一個新嘅廣播室，俾同學體驗一下電視同埋廣播新聞嘅工作。今日我哋嘅 TV News Broadcast Team 就會向在座各位率先展示我哋嘅廣播室。Welcome to the JMSC News Broadcast Demonstration. My name is Isaac Chung, and this is my co-host Chloe Lam. 唔該曬 ，Isaac， 歡迎大家收睇 GMSC 新聞報導，我係 Chloe Lam。今日我哋會帶大家睇下電視新聞報導製作，同埋等大家體驗一下新聞及傳媒研究中心 GMSC 可以學到嘅嘢。接住落嚟，我哋有 GMSC 視頻記者一個有關新聞論壇嘅報導。今年香港國際記者協會舉辦咗一座新聞論壇，參與嘅組織有著名國際傳媒機構 CNN、AFP 法新社、紐約時報等等。更有資深傳媒人 Christy Liu Stout 嘅分享，稍後會有佢哋嘅報導。That's right, Chloe. At the JMSC, our students are encouraged to go beyond the classroom with hands-on courses. JMSC video production journalists recently covered a journalism conference at the Foreign Correspondents Club that brought together famous anchors such as Christy Liu Stout with news bosses from major organizations such as CNN, AFP, and the New York Times and the Financial Review. Let's take a look at one report. We increasingly communicate online, and we even live our entire lives online. Documents live online, systems live online, even companies live online. So encryption is the one way for us to online close the door. I also used to believe that there is a security versus um, privacy trade-off. Um, today, I mostly look at it as a um, security through privacy. If without privacy online, without securing our lives online, we become vulnerable. If you are conducting journalism online, and we increasingly do, then you need to be secure online. The threats are huge, um, and journalists don't take them seriously enough. We need proper security, we need proper encryption, we need to start taking this seriously. You have an obligation to a source, and if they get in touch with you by phone or email, then you should be taking uh, steps to protect them. After meeting Snowden, I realized this is for real. I know the tools, I, I know what they're capable of. So the first thing I did when I saw Snowden was, as soon as he saw my smartphone, he went into a panic. He says, you need to get that out of here. Um, I want you to uh, put it in another bedroom. And then he says, I, I want you not only to put it in a bedroom, I want you to put it in a fridge. One of them asked me, could you do a cost benefit analysis of the Snowden revelations. I can tell you the benefits. Now, the benefits is we've had this huge debate and people now understand what the governments are capable of. Thank you for our reporter. Don't think that the production of the professional degree is a great teacher. In fact, they are only two or three years of teaching. The JMSC is located in the second oldest building on campus at Elliott Hall. We enjoy state-of-the-art facilities in a beautiful historical building in a quiet corner of the campus. Recently, we have unveiled the JMSC Digital Broadcast Hub. As well as this fully functional industry standard TV studio, we have post-production labs, sound booths, and podcasting studios. This is the latest in a long list of how the JMSC keeps up with technology and all the latest digital editing tools, including drones that are on hand for our students. Recently, the JMSC has even been experimenting with virtual reality. 冇錯，香港大學新聞及傳媒研究中心 JMSC 位於校園裏邊第二古老嘅大廈——怡禮堂。喺呢座充滿歷史色彩嘅古樓裏邊，我哋享用最先進嘅設施。最近，我哋 JMSC 電子廣播中心以及符合行業標準嘅電視演播室揭幕。我哋有後期製作室、錄音室同埋播客錄音室。由此可見，我哋一直緊貼最新嘅技術。我哋嘅學生可以使用最新嘅科技器材，包括航拍機。最近 JMSC 亦都開始嘗試用虛擬現實嘅技術。稍後會有同學 Kenny Lee 嘅報導。
That's right, Chloe. So we cross now to our reporter, Kenny Lee, with this technology report. Thank you, Chloe and Isaac. Let me quickly introduce to you this virtual reality that we have just updated to our technology collection. So this is a virtual reality camera. As a lot of you might have heard of the term virtual reality, it always aims to give viewers a 360 degree view of what's actually happening. For us, as reporters, we would wear this helmet, this camera, to go on to different events, including protests or disasters, and then viewers can then see not only from the front of the camera, but they can also pan left, pan right, zoom into a particular object, or even see from behind. So it's really like having another pair of eyes at the back of your head. We use these to produce quality content, and of course, we want as much viewers as possible that we can get in order to show the world what we are trying to produce. With the latest technology, students would be able to share their report through different devices, including smartphones, tablets, and laptops. So enough with the talking, I'm just going to quickly show you how a virtual reality video would actually work. Earlier on, our student from um, Bachelor of Journalism Year 3, Eric Jung, had produced a video with this virtual reality camera. And I'm just going to quickly show you um, Elliot Hall, which is where the journalism department is situated in. So sit tight and get ready. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Young, a current JMSE student. And today I'm using this camera to show you what life is like for a journalism student here. Excuse me when I put this on. And now you can see through my eyes. On the left is Elliot Hall, and you can see this Roy is Elliot and Hall. AJ in front of me. Looks like we're all set. Let's go. Building. This is the hey. DM lab. <laughs> I don't care if you're an ABC okay, news AJ. reporting, Guardian <laughs> freelancing, Jupiter score breaking, overachieving JMSC student, we don't do that here anymore. Everyone, welcome to the new JMSC virtual reality. This is the lab where we produce Today, most of our digital reports. We can even see the students from here. Hi Kelly, hi Justin. Are you guys down? Yeah. Yay! Let's go! <laughs> And this is the drone report. These are the equipments. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, who wants to it's a good day today. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, Hi, Fangry. Okay. Oh. Oh. Hi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna mess this up again. Let's <laughs> go. Oops. We gotta go. Yeah, you better go. <laughs> and this is the podcast lab that we have on the second floor of Elliot Hall. Elliot Hall. This is AJ again. And then we have Roy and Kevin. And this is the, our newest live studio. Where Chloe and Isaac are actually yeah, doing that broadcasting. You're posting, you're not just staring at the screen, you're really engaging with your audience. Okay. You've got this. Yes. Let's look at the crew from behind the scene. Hi. Back to Eric. And that's what life is like for a JMSE student there. And that's it for my reporting. Thank you for your patience. Back to you, Chloe and Isaac. That was Kenny Lee reporting live at Elliott Hall with a taste of what new students can expect from the JMSC in the not too distant future. And for all of you here today watching this Info Day broadcast, you can watch Eric Chung's VR tour of the JMSC and experience it for yourself at home on YouTube's VR channel with Google's Cardboard Viewer. Jmsc students are continually winning journalism awards even before they've graduated. 
Most recently, a Bachelor of Journalism students won the grand award in Hong Kong Broadcaster TVB's third intercollegiate documentary competition in August. The documentary tells the story about a Hong Kong bodybuilder who was born female but now identifies as genderqueer. Here's a short excerpt. Gender 用来称呼一些不想被简单归类为男性或女性的人 即是不是那個跨性別或者gender 我心目中姊妹是可以一起走、一起扮靚 就是其中一個TB啦 我爹地不喜欢我玩运动的我想我鼓励他他可能其实不想我玩运动的其中一个原因也都不想我好变得很难走头的 well, we've seen plenty about what's happening and what's to come at the GMSC. Well, for more with life after the GMSC, we're joined in the studio with three past students. Let's welcome Gloria Chung, James Chan, and Audrey Kavalova. Welcome back. Hi. So, what have you guys been up to? Where are you guys working right now, Gloria? I work for the Financial Times in Hong Kong. And I'm now working at the Equal Opportunities Commission. And Audrey? And I'm working in the Media Relations team at Bank of America. That's great. That's great. So, do you guys want to share a particular experience you guys had here at the GMSC, either with internships or exchange or anything you experienced here? Audrey, would you like to start? Um, what to pick? But uh, I think the, the thing that left the biggest impression on me was my exchange experience. Um, I went to Sciences Po in Paris for one semester. It was on a special journalism exchange program between the JMSC and Sciences Po. And it attracted a lot of students studying journalism as well from around the world. Um, so that made it really interesting and quite cool to be among students who were studying the same thing, but from completely different backgrounds. Um, we had to do a lot of exciting things. The entire time that we were there was the Paris mayoral elections. And that was the first time that a female mayor was elected uh, in Paris. So we were following that. We had some pretty cool assignments, which involved trying to use the best of our French that we could, um, even though mo for most of us, it was pretty terrible. Um, and I made friendships and I made connections with people who are now also working in journalism or also working in communications 
um, around the world. So that's pretty cool to keep in touch with everybody um, and making those connections. Thank you very much, Audrey. James, would you like to say anything? So I also have like a uh, different really great experience at GMSC and one of the most like ex uh, memorable experience would be like one of the short term program we run at that time is basically like well, we went to Japan for a week and like uh, with a couple of our students and also with a professor and also a uh, teaching assistant. And we went there for like reporting the earthquake anniversaries. Like so that was the one year after the 311 uh, earthquake in Japan. So we're covering basically all the memorial like uh, event there. And also we try to do some feature stories about like uh, some of the painters there, some of the photographers who went to uh, the earthquake zone and to do some like uh, what happened like after a year of earthquake. And like we have around six or seven of us, and we, I think we end up produce more than six or seven stories uh, in a week. So we have like some uh, for the radio, television, Hong Kong, RTHK, some for SCMP, and also for CNN. So different kind of like multimedia like uh, pieces we were doing, and like it was a really exciting experience because like. We have some Japanese speaker in our team, but like uh, most of us, we try to communicate with like our limited language ability, and we try to uh, do a lot of fox pox on the streets and like uh, basically uh, in English. But like we also try to <laughs> use barely like body language and stuff to communicate, and that was a pretty cool experience that we have. Yeah. That must have been quite challenging. But you talked about the multimedia element of journalism. It's it's def it must have been a very great learning opportunity, right? Yeah, and what we were doing at that time is also about like we try to do some like radio pieces like uh, at in the morning and then we basically with less than an hour and it was on air in Hong Kong so that was like pretty like uh, we sent all the thing with our iPhone and uh, like a mic and everything was like up back to Hong Kong pretty quickly because we have like Wi-Fi and stuff yeah how about you Gloria is there, is there anything you want to share um, during my second year, I interned for CNN International in Hong Kong. So it's also a very special experience for a journalism student in Hong Kong because you get to put yourself into an international newsroom. And then we were doing lives with the bureaus in New York and in London. And then I always had to get up at four in the morning just to get to work at five because of the very early uh, morning newscast. So I think it's a very eye-opening experience because you get to work with an international news crew and what they are doing is very up to the professional standards. So um, I think overall it's a great learning experience. And looking back to my three years at JMSC, I think I've done an internship with Time Out Hong Kong, which is a magazine, and then with CNN, and then later I also work with the documentary with an Oscar-winning filmmaker um, who's also a faculty member in JMSE. So I think in here, um, there's no one way of journalism in terms of just writing or just filming, but you can do and try out a lot of different things. So that's a good thing I like about JMSE. And there are a lot of international exposure, your exchange experiences, your, your, little pro your projects, your internship experiences. It must have been a very eye-opening and like great, great learning opportunity, right? Yeah, definitely. So do you, have a, do you guys have any advice for uh, the potential applicants of JMSC sitting here? Do you have any words of advice for them? I would probably add to what Gloria has just said um, in terms of journalism being very diverse. Um, the other thing is that um, studying journalism, you get to learn so many practical skills that I think are very um, applicable to a lot of careers, not just journalism. So um, there's a lot, a lot of our peers um, are not directly working as reporters or perhaps videographers, um, they go to a whole bunch of different careers. Um, so, so that's one thing. And then the other thing I would add is, the, the, the thing that you have to keep in mind, I think, when you apply is, um, you become part of a pretty close-knit family, and uh, people really keep in touch after they, leave, um, after they leave JMSC and start working. One thing I've noticed is, um, in my role as a media relations uh, person, I have to meet up with a lot of reporters, I have to make a lot of connections, and a lot of the people that I meet are, you know, ex-JMSC students, masters or bachelor's degree students, which is very cool. 
And for me, I think like the first advice is do apply. It's very interesting and a fun experience. I think one of the cool things is like definitely meeting different people at GMSC. Like I think at that time we have around 30 ish students at the undergraduate batch and we're coming from like more than 10 or 20 countries. And then that was like really cool and like international experience you, you have every day at the classroom, at the lecture hall, at this like studio. Basically like you're having it like every day to how to communicate with different people. And also I want to add like to what just like Audrey has said is basically I think like the skills like I learned at JMSC is not just about like doing reporting in front of cameras or how do you do like a very technical like uh, stories or like doing video editing. But it's also about some soft skills that actually can apply in a lot of different industries. Like how do you like being more aware of the what happening in the society? How do you communicate uh, with like different people in a very like concise manner and also people that is understandable? Uh, and I think that definitely applied to like my later career after I graduated from GMSC. I work a bit at like the United Nations in Beijing and like a lot of how do you communicate with different stakeholders and also sometimes you also have to do some media work for them. And also even for now, like I'm now like doing some policy and research work at a statutory body in Hong Kong. And that is definitely also applicable for what I have learned so far. And Gloria, I see your byline in the Financial Times a lot. Would you like to take us through a day as a journalist? Sure. Um, so my day starts with me in the office reading over all the news, either in local media, foreign media, and mainly in mainland Chinese media, because there are a lot of information in sites like Xinhua or People's Daily that we really have to cover because it's part of my beat. Um, in terms of day-to-day -day work, I. Um, there are all sorts of interviews that I would go for, like to CEOs, to executives, but sometimes I also un uh, interview quite a lot of politicians and maybe even protesters if there's happened to be one um, happening in Hong Kong. And then I also go on quite a lot of reporting trips um, back to mainland China to visit factories because manufacturing is, ba is big in Guangdong. And then I also visited startup. And then most recently, the uh, most interesting thing was going to Taiwan to cover the presidential election. Um, it's just meeting people from all walks of, all walks of life, including um, the PR people, which I actually met up with um, Audrey to discover our common job, right? Yes, exactly. Um, that's right. Uh, well, as Gloria said, part of the PR job is trying to um, understand what journalists are interested in. So. Um, Gloria and I actually met up after we started working again to find out what we both do. Um, I wanted to tell Gloria about the kind of research that our bank puts out to see if she'd be interested in some of the topics that we publish on and to see where it makes sense to, to collaborate on that. And of course, because it's the financial times, we really like <laughs> and want um, any kind of, you know, nice mentions by the FT. So, yeah. All right, well, thank you, ladies, and thank you to all three of you for sharing with us your experiences here at the GMSC. Thank you, Gloria, James, and Audrey. We see that our graduate students have come to many different places, including banks, government agencies, and so on. And when they study, they also have a lot of experience and practical experience. We have reached the end of our show. We invite you to visit the website at www.gmsc.com. jmsc.hku.hk is our website. And we have our Facebook page and Twitter. To find out more about the JMSC and our programs, please visit our website at jmsc.hku.hk. We also have a Facebook page and Twitter account. That's all for us today. We hope this has been helpful. Thank you for your company. And don't forget to head to our booth at the Centennial Campus Room LG08 to chat to some current JMSC students. Thank you and goodbye, and we hope to see you soon at the JMSC. Now we would like to invite Jeffrey Timmons, our Director of Bachelor of Journalism Program, to outline the entrance, entrance requirement for us. Yes, please. Thank you, Melissa. Um, well, there's not really a lot more for me to say, since our students have already said it uh, so eloquently. Uh, I just wanted to stress that that entire video production we just watched was scripted, uh, written, edited, produced, uh, and created in its entirety by our students. And 
You can imagine this makes us faculty incredibly proud of them. And there's nothing we like better to see them, like Audrey, James, and Gloria, do some amazing things uh, with the skills they learn here at the JMSC and pursue these incredible careers. It makes us very, very, very proud. One thing that you've heard a lot so far this afternoon is that the JMSC is, is a family. And the faculty believe that very much as well. It's a very diverse faculty, as you can tell. Uh, we have uh, students from more than a dozen countries around the world. We have a very international faculty as well. Uh, and although we share the common language of journalism, we think of journalism in its broadest possible way. And you can see that in the careers that our graduates go on to do. So we're not just about journalism. Um, we're also quite a small family. And we like to keep it that way. HKU is a very, very big place. It's easy to get lost at HKU. But we at the JMSC believe in, in, in a whole person education. We believe in paying a lot of attention to our students. And we believe in working together to meet our learning objectives. It's not so much a faculty-student arrangement at the JMSC, but we're working together as journalists, more of a mentor-mentee relationship. And we, we, we think this is a very effective way uh, to, to, to learn and to teach at GMSC. Now, it, it means we do keep our, our family small. We take between 25 to 30, sometimes 33 students a year. The exact number varies from year to year, so don't worry too much about the exact quota. Uh, we look at the students who are applying, and we try to take as many of them uh, that uh, we think will, will, will fit. Um, most of you will be applying through the, the JUPIS scheme, and our, 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 our median JUPIS scores you know, vary a bit uh, from year to year, and I, I don't want everyone to obsess too much about your JUPIS score. I know this is a, um, something that you're, you're, you're worried about, you're going to spend a lot of time studying. You know, try not to worry too much about it. Um, last year, our median JUPIS score was 27. This is best five. So our median Best five Jupiter score was, I'm oh, sorry, 27. What did I say? 27, okay. See, I, I, I just let the students do all the talking and I should say nothing. Um, so our median best five Jupiter score last year was 27. Um, and our lowest score we accepted was, was 25. Uh, now this does vary from year to year. Um, but I want to stress that this coming year we will make uh, what we consider to be a significant change to our admissions procedures. Now, uh, university guidelines force us to focus almost entirely on the JUPIS score, the DSE Best 5 score. However, we are going to be inviting every JUPIS applicant who puts us in Band A for an interview in late May. So uh, everyone applying to the JUPIS scheme who puts the JMSC Bachelor of Journalism program as one of their top three choices will be invited in for an interview in late May. Now this is a, an informal chat. We're not going to test you. We're not going to ask you any mean questions. It's just a chance for us to get to know each applicant a little bit better and a chance for you to ask any questions you might have about, about the program or about life at HKU. Now, the change here is that while the DSC Best 5 score will be the primary, uh, well, really exclusive uh, metric for applicants, we will use the interview performance as a tiebreaker. Okay? So if you do come in for an interview, you do have the potential to improve your performance in the application. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Now, we do get a lot of applicants, so we unfortunately cannot interview people who put us as one of their uh, band B or C or D choices. Right? So if you are interested in the program, I strongly encourage you to uh, choose the Bachelor of Journalism program as one of your top three choices uh, as of May. Okay? So more details will come on that. Now we also, of course, accept applicants from the non jupis scheme. Uh, we, we do take quite a number of those every, every year. The exact percentage varies quite a bit depending on the number of JUPIS applicants and the overall uh, interest in our program from non-JUPIS applicants. Uh, we have found in the past that uh, IB program students do, do quite well in our program, the International Baccalaureate. So if you're pursuing an IB diploma, um, that will certainly help you uh, at the JMSC. 
And uh, for the IB applicants, our minimum score is 36. Uh, we also uh, welcome A-levels applicants. Uh, we get a few of those uh, every year from all around the world. And for A-levels applicants, our minimum score is two A's and one B. Um, so that's about all I wanted to talk about uh, for the admissions procedures. I'm happy to take any questions uh, you, you might have. Um, we've got students here, we've got administrators here, uh, so any questions you might have. We, we have a variety of language skills as well, so feel free to ask in Cantonese, uh, Mandarin, uh, English, uh, what else we have, Japanese, um, Spanish? Spanish? I can't remember, I think it's Spanish. Anyway, uh, so feel free to ask questions. I'll turn it over to Melissa. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, other from grades, what other things we would look, look for in a student? Well, um, I mean, that's a good question, right? I, I can't tell you exactly what we look for in, in students. I mean, the way things work in Hong Kong, uh, for better or worse, is we have to look at, at for cheapest applicants, your DSE score. For IB applicants, your IB score. We, we have to. Uh, it's, it's the one universal metric. However, what I can tell you uh, is about some skills that we find are particularly helpful once you get here. Uh, first is curiosity. If you're curious about, about a whole bunch of different things, you'll probably be a pretty good journalist. That's really why I went into journalism. I was a journalist for um, almost 20 years before I came to HKU uh, with the Wall Street Journal. And I thought, until I got this job, that being a journalist was the greatest thing in the entire world. Because I got to go out there and talk to some really interesting, smart people about all these different topics I knew nothing about. And I would learn about all this new stuff. And then, even better, I'll get to share what I just learned with the entire world. If you're a curious person, it's fantastic. So curiosity is one. The other thing I think is very important is, is empathy. Empathy. Caring about other people. You know, my, my students often ask me when, they, when I send them out for the first time to interview people, they ask me, well, what if people don't want to talk to me? You know, I, 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 I'm nervous about going up and approaching people and asking them questions, sometimes very tough questions. But empathy is a very powerful thing. If you show you're interested in somebody, if you show you care, you're genuinely curious about what they do, what they think, how they live, they will talk to you. That's the secret of journalism, right? So curiosity and empathy, those two very seemingly simple things will take you a long way. And not just in journalism as a career. You can see from our graduates, they've used these and channeled these skills very, very well of a diverse bunch of careers. Um, I want to ask about the application procedure for the Bachelor of Journalism. I'm a senior student of Korean International School of Hong Kong, and I'm a non jpa student. And our school has two sections, Korean section and international section, and I'm in Korean section, which follows the Korean education system. But I'm not taking the Korean public university entrance test, so I, I want to submit SAT scores instead of that. But I, I'm curious about um, whether the SAT score have to follow the general requirement on the page because it, which is applied to American pattern and education. So I'm curious about the whether it's um, follow the general requirement. Yes, we, we do accept SAT scores as, as a criterion of admission. Um, we, we, we want to <laughs> um, uh, so if you're taking the SAT scores, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you will need to take the, uh, the, the, the SAT-1, the three sections of SAT-1, and then three subject tests. So three SAT subject tests, or three APs, right? Yeah. Yeah, so three SAT-2 subject tests, or three AP exams. And our minimum cutoff for SAT-1 is 19. 
Uh, so our minimum SAT1 score is 1980, 1980. So yeah, you're, you're totally fine, not a problem. And we try to be as flexible as possible with um, admissions criteria because we do want to welcome applicants from a wide variety of, of, of circumstances. Uh, I want to ask about like uh, any special extracurriculum activities will help uh, like improve the skills of getting in this uh, subject. The short answer is not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we like well-rounded students. We do absolutely. So if you, if you come to the program with with a wide variety of extracurricular activities, that it certainly can't hurt, right? But and again, you know, university-wide, HKU-wide, the test score is, is the primary uh, indicator. But yeah, we do look at them. Um, every, every student who applies, we look at their entire portfolio. So I do encourage you, if you're applying through the Chupas scheme, do get your portfolio in, because we, we do look at it. I, I can't guarantee that for every program at H HKU, but here at the JMSC, we do look at your entire portfolio quite carefully. Uh, feel free to ask questions in Cantonese as well. Uh, that's to totally fine. Good afternoon. I am a, a non jupiter student, and uh, I think in the application system, we don't have the band A choice. We can only have we can, we can only choose one for first choice, and we only have three choices in the end. So I'm um, I'm wondering if we still got the interview chances to. Thank, thank you for reminding me. See, I, I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, we will be interviewing all non-JUPAS applicants as well if you put our program as your first choice. Okay. Uh, we, we get, we get a, a lot of non-JUPAS applications as well. Uh, in some circumstances, we have invited non-JUPAS applicants who put our program as their second choice in for you. We did a few, not not many, not many. Um, so if you're interested in your program, in our program, you're applying as a non-JUPA student. Um, you really should put us as your first choice. Otherwise, we probably uh, we probably won't interview you, and we probably won't shortlist you, right? Uh, so uh, um, only a shortlisted non jupas students will be invited in for an interview. Um, what about the portfolio? Like, um, in the application system, do we have places to upload our um, videos or anything? Because Videos might be an issue, uh, but what I would encourage you to do is, in your portfolio, put a link. Some, get, get your video online somewhere, whether you know, a privately hosted, maybe a Dropbox, um, or, or YouTube if you want to share it publicly. But I, I would put it somewhere where we can access it. Good afternoon. I have a question, which is, when you, I'm the Jupiter students. You, you have mentioned that the JMS, <coughs> so excuse me, JMSC will count the best five subjects. However, is there any subjects will have higher proportion of the DSE results? Ah, good question. No, we treat everything equally. So we just look at your best five score. However, um, if there is a, a situation where two candidates have the same best five score, we will look at their interview uh, performance. And then, uh, if it's still a tie, we will look at uh, your English language DSE score. So there, there, there are a few ways we, we, we have uh, we break a tie situation, uh, inter interview uh, and then and then English. But for the, for the first round, we just look at best five. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, actually, I'm the final year student of the higher diploma program, and then uh, because. Uh, I would, don't know about the GPA score, the minimum or the median or the highest, and I want to apply for it. But actually, uh, the JMSC didn't provide uh, the direct entry, direct admission scheme. They only provide the first year. But even though I still want to apply, but through the DAS, I have five choices to apply. So uh, how about, uh, what, what, what if I put the uh, JMSC at the second, second choice where I have the uh, in the field chance, or I still have to put the cost in the first choice? Uh, we're probably not going to interview you if, if you put 
If you put us as your second choice, probably not. Probably not. Um, and just, just to clarify about, about the direct entry scheme and, and why we don't, we don't have that, um, we do welcome uh, people to apply from, from associate degrees, by all means. We've had some, some students join our program from these, uh, uh, join the Basel Journalism program from associate programs, done very, very well. The issue is that our first year in the Bachelor of Journalism program is a very, very special year. You're spending almost all of your time with your cohort, with your journalism students, doing specially designed courses just for journalism students. And it's really the foundation of the entire Bachelor of Journalism program. After that first year, then you go on to start taking courses in your second major, uh, you take advanced journalism courses. So without that core foundation in your first year, the program just wouldn't work. Uh, so that, that's why. Uh, like, do you have any figures or data about the GPA score that for the admission? Um, so 3.7 is, is, is our minimum GPA. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to know how many people apply for this uh, course, counting JUPIS and non-JUPIS students. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so last year it was about 400, 400 JUPAS, uh, put us as in, in, in bed A. Yeah, so uh, in about 400 JUPAS applicants put us as one of their band A choices, uh, 400. Um, and then, was more than, more than 100 non -Jupas. Uh, And then more than 100 non jupas And then for the mainland admission scheme, there were several hundred. So it, 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 because we've taken students from so many different streams, it's actually very difficult to give you a, a, a number. Um, I mean, it's it's competitive, but you know we're not we're not as competitive as as, as law and, and in medicine. <laughs> um, so you know, try try not to worry too much about about the competition, right? I mean, we're we're trying as as much as we can to um, make our program accessible to people who really have an interest, right? And that's why we do the interview. Um, it's why we try to look at, at, at the whole person as well, right? The, the portfolio and initiative. Right? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a non jupa student and I'm going to take Gaokao. Uh, actually, I'm wondering that uh, apart from the Gaokao grades, what else is required for me to apply for JMSC? Thank you. Um, if you take Gaokao, uh, you, you're going to need to apply through the mainland admission scheme. Right? I mean, there's no way around it. Um, if, you, if you want to apply uh, as a non jupa student without going through the mainland admission scheme, you will need to take the SAT or provide IB scores or A-levels. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.